Ox and Hare presents, in association with True Story FM, the Swashbuckling Ladies Debate Society. Today's adventure, That Golden Valley, Part 2. Good morning. Good morning, Goldie. The state of your hair tells me that you did not get much sleep last night. You must tell me everything. Zinnia, I can't do that. While there's all these strangers around, remind me later. Where's Saffron? An excellent question. She did not come to bed last night. You haven't told her, have you? There has not been time. Zinnia! It is true. There is much you must be caught up on. Treachery is afoot at this wedding ceremony. I'm going to need the blackest of coffees for this. Later! Good morning, Goldie. There you are! Sit down! Of course. Good morning, Zinnia. Morning. I missed you last night. Sorry about that. The way those women consumed tequila, it was astounding. By the time we got back... You were too drunk to knock on the door. No, I didn't know where the room was, and there was no one at the desk to ask. So I stayed in Liliana's room. Yes, of course. That makes perfect sense. I just... I missed you. I see whatever bug was in your bonnet is still there. And what about you, Miss Fiancé? Did you even leave the room yesterday? No, but dirty details will have to wait. Zinnia has caught me up on Fausto Phoenix and his claims, but that's as far as we got. What did you learn? If there's a plot, Liliana is unaware of it, and her friends feel the same. They all believe that Henry is on the up and up, and while they think he's a bit dull... He is. Go on. They don't suspect any sinister motives from him. What about her feelings for Fausto? They are also real. Even though he was unfaithful to her? That's not an accurate term. They both entered into their relationship with an understanding. He wasn't cheating on her. She just didn't restrict him from having physical relationships with other people and vice versa. I'm sorry if I seem like the rube here, but you can just do that? As long as both people in the relationship are aware of the situation. When only one believes it, this is when trouble creeps in. She's speaking from experience. I must sound like such a kid to you, but I didn't even know that was a possibility. I always thought that when you get into a relationship, that gives you exclusive access to that person's private parts. And if that is your understanding, together, as something you both want, you are correct. That is what Saffron and I have. But not everyone has the same needs, the same desires to be met. Relationships can be complicated. It's not one size fits all, no matter what the common man says. Or the repressive parents. Precisely. Forgive me if I'm getting too scholarly. I had to learn this later in my life, too. And now that you have chosen the one you wish to share your future with, you'll need to have the conversation about what you both need. Right. We will definitely do that. But I think we can all agree that really solid relationships are built on communication and that if there's something that's bothering one person, it's very important to tell them and not hide it away. Goldie, if there's something you need to tell Dudley, this can wait. No, that's not. Never mind. What did you learn on Henry's side? As your women were with the tequila, so these men were with bourbon. But... After several drinks and one arm wrestling match, I was able to ferret my way into the groomsman's good graces. I believe you mean weasel your way in. Small world dance, burrows in. What's the difference? Well, you weaseled your way in to ferret out information. See? Now I'm getting it from both sides? I heard you used to like that kind of thing. Ho, ho, ho! Listen to this one. One night of intense passion and she gets so saucy. Back on topic, please. Of course. But it is largely the same. I have learned more about this Henry, and while he is not the most exciting of people, he seems genuine. Genuine isn't sexy. Depends on the genuine. 
After her time with the Flash, a bit of substance was probably just what Liliana needed. That does seem to be the case. His boyfriends? No. Is there a better word than male friends? Anyway, they all adore her, say she's the best thing for him, that she's brought him out of his shell. They believe that love is genuine, and uh, I concur. I know better than to doubt your instincts when it comes to love. If there's a sinister motive, I don't think it's with either bride or groom. Agreed. But where does that leave us? Good morning, Zinnia, Saffron, and there's my beautiful fiancé. And there's my beautiful fiancé. May I join you? Uh, that is only... Uh, we're, we're doing swashbuckling stuff right now. Can I come and find you later? Oh, yeah, I, absolutely. Can I just borrow you for two shakes? Then you can get back to work. Oh, absolutely. Back in a sec. I know you came here with them, but I was hoping we'd be able to spend the day together. Oh, last night wasn't enough for you, cowboy. Oh, gosh, it was plenty. Not that I wouldn't want more, but I, I don't expect. <laughs> Calm down, Dudley. We've got lots of time. You get me so befuddled, Goldie. <laughs> I meant I, I really wanted to spend actual time with you, walking around and talking and seeing what sights are here. I ain't never been this far west. The Gulf of Mexico is fine and all, but I heard it ain't nothing compared to the Pacific Ocean. Sure. We just have this plot we need to unravel to make sure the wedding doesn't fall apart. But ocean, check. It's on the agenda. Okay, that's fine. I, I guess it's best you do this adventuring while you can. I'll see you. Oh, wait, uh, what does that mean? I mean... When you're living on the ranch back in Oklahoma, there's no more rooftops to jump off of or walking statues to smash. Why would I be in Oklahoma? You'll be moving to Massalia to live at the society. I, I won't. My ranch is in Oklahoma. My university is there, too. I'm not just leaving them to run off to France. But I'm supposed to leave my life? You're used to moving. Plus, what do you have that's really tying you down? You're not from France, and they'll get along without you. I'm a vital member of the team. Well, of course you are, but they were fine before you joined, and I expect they'll get along without you. What, what do you expect me to do? Well, whatever you want. I own my place. I got tenure. You don't have to work at all, except around the farm, that is. You want me to work the farm? No, I want you to build a life with me. There, together. Put down roots, set your wild past aside, live the quiet life. When where no one's trying to kill you and where you don't have to lie to get what you want. Goldie, you've earned it. I didn't... Well, I hadn't thought about... Maybe you should. I'm going to go find myself some breakfast. You go help those two make this wedding happen. I love you, Goldie. I love you, too. Goldie? What's wrong? You look like you've been cow-kicked by a mule. I've never heard you use this expression. It's something our stable master used to say. It just popped into my brain. Being back here, all kinds of memories are starting to bubble up to the surface. Happy ones, I hope. It's it's nothing. Uh, just one of those conversations I need to have with my future husband. If it's got you concerned, we should talk about it now. Concealing these things never makes them better. However, if she's not ready to discuss it, perhaps we should respect her privacy. Not everything should be discussed immediately after. This is a matter between her and her spouse to be after all. We don't want to be the nosy neighbors. In this case, you're both right. But I don't mind saying Dudley wants me to move in with him in Oklahoma. For how long? For forever. You're leaving the society? No. Yes. I don't know. I, I hadn't really thought about it. We've... Never talked about the future so specifically, just when we'd see each other next. What should I do? As someone who packed up her life and moved across the world, I can say it's a marvelous adventure. Full of new ideas, new people, new possibilities. As long as you're with a partner who feels the same. However, uh, leaving behind what you know, stepping away from the people who love and support you, it takes a toll. The unknown can be scary, and the new destination can be very lonely. You need to make sure you've considered all the outcomes. That is not what I expected you to say. It has been a weekend full of surprises. Why not one more? Goldie, what is your heart telling you to do? It's saying, 
that I should stop talking about this because here comes the bride. Good morning, ladies. Saffron, I'm glad to see you slept well last night. <laughs> My head is still a little spinny. Zini, I heard you drank most of the boys under the table. But you also look none the worse for wear. And Goldie, I'm so happy for you. Congratulations. That tan guapo is so handsome. <laughs> look at you. This is your day and you're taking the time to check up on us. You must have a hundred things to do. I do, but seeing my friends and family, that's at the top of my list. Plus, I have my own squad of senoritas who are going to whisk me away from place to place, so I don't miss anything. <laughs> I'm so glad the three of you are here today with us. And speaking of us, where's that groom of yours? Oh, he's around. He's a bit traditional, so he's scheduled everything so we don't see each other until the service this afternoon. He didn't strike me as a superstitious man. You say superstitious, he'd stay efficient. Ugh, I'm not a fan of that word. But I can understand it. And speaking of men, we had a chat with Fausto yesterday. You certainly did. I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to give you some context. The wedding mechanism is no joke, and I got caught in the gears. What, um, what did you think of him? He's very handsome. And vain. Charismatic. Self-centered. Talented. Overconfident. See, see, see to all of the above. But still very much in love with you. Unfortunately so. And I... Him. You are? So are you calling off the wedding? Not at all. Over the years, I've come to understand that love isn't binary. With one person feeling the space in my heart exclusively. It's an amazing muscle and can expand in ways you didn't imagine. Saffron and Zinnia explained to me about your relationship with him, which seems very open-minded of you, but it's still a new idea to me. If it wasn't that, what made you break up with him, if you don't mind me asking? It was a difference of goals. Fausto is wondrous, a, a fireworks show every night. I even joined him on his adventures. I, I had my own mask and costume, if you can believe it. But I came to understand that this is what he wanted to do forever. And you? Wanted more. And less. I had so much fun with him, but life is about more than fun. I wanted to snuggle up some evenings, warm and safe. I wanted to sleep in and not be out until dawn. I had the extraordinary. But you wanted some ordinary. Yes. The heart wants what it wants. And so I had to choose. I wish I could have... Ah, never mind. You wished for what? I wished for both. My wild side isn't dead. And some nights I still look out on the rooftops and yearn to be out there. But a choice needed to be made. And I found love on the other side of the coin. One that dotes on me and gives me civility and safety, comfort and care. You wish Henry had a bit of Fausto's fire? No, because then he wouldn't be the Henry I fell in love with. I always love Fausto, but my love for Henry is just as true. Man, I wish I knew my emotions as well as you know yours. It's been a journey to get to this place. Lots of dark alleys and sleepless nights. But I also learned to listen to what my poor, scarred heart was trying to tell me. I think of it this way. Fausto would be happy to help me drink the wine. But only Henry would join me in planting the vineyard. And speaking of vineyards... Do you think this is our wise course? On this day of all days? I don't like keeping secrets from those I care about. Whatever it is, you, you can tell me. Saffron. Fausto believes that you are being duped. He says that this marriage is just an elaborate con to acquire my family's holdings. That's... Wow. <laughs> Even for him, that's elaborate. He says there was something in my parents' will about it. I know they gave something to your mother. They did. It's what I used to start my first restaurant. But one of the conditions of their will was that I only see the parts that pertain to me. That's grabby. Even in death, my parents are still keeping things from me. Of course, I'm not worried about you taking over all this. But Fausto believes they're planning on taking it from you through legal maneuvering. She's quiet. She's taking it all in. I know this is a lot to think about on your wedding date, but is it possible that... Henry. The groom? 
No, the other one. Henry Sr. Su padre. This is exactly the kind of thing his father would do. You already suspected him. He was against us being together. He never said anything directly, but he implied that I wasn't classy enough for his little boy. Then suddenly he came around. I thought it was my charms. You are quite charming. Thank you, Goldie. But now it was probably this. We need to confront him. Now. Hold on. No, let's go. I appreciate your passionate spirit, but you have duties to perform. This is more important. And your absence will be noticed. All of our efforts to make sure the wedding goes off as planned will be for naught if you end up in a violent confrontation with your uh, to-be father by law. Is this correct? It's close enough. But Liliana should be allowed to confront her tormentor. If that's what's going on, sure. But we still don't know. So let us rake up some muck and find out who the real slime ball is. Consider it our wedding gift to you. Yes. All right. Henry Sr. is likely still working, so you'll find him downtown at the largest building in town on the top floor. Of course he is. Liliana, don't let this darken your day. You still have a date with a well-dressed man at the end of the day, and he's going to ask you a very important question. And I have an answer for him. All right, I'll allow myself to get swept up in all the goofy girl things. But when you know... You'll know. We promise. I can already see a search party forming to find me. Saffron, are you ready? Saffron? I'm sorry, with all the Frausto business, I didn't get around to mentioning. Liliana has asked me to join the bridal party. Since her parents are dead, she's asked me to walk her down the aisle. My mate's trying to honor. But now that all this is going on, I should probably go with you two. Uh, no. No, I can think of no better person for Liliana to have at her side for this. Help her with whatever she needs, including keeping her mind off these dark topics. Goldie and I can handle ourselves. You should... You should be with your family today. If you're sure... It is why we came. Go. Be with them. I will. Thank you. For luck. Surrounded by such women, I am already the luckiest woman alive. I promise. I'll, I'll get her back to you unharmed. I promise. Hasta luego. Lydia, are you okay? I'm fine. I'm unsure of my footing, Goldie. How about confronting a corrupt businessman who's trying to swindle a sweet bride-to-be? Ah, yes. This is much more in my areas of expertise. Let's away. So I says to her, I says, lady, if you didn't have oil on your land, I wouldn't even be in the same room as you. <laughs> I said that. I really said that. Okay, that's gotta be him. How did you want to play this? I could be a rival tycoon who wants to outbid him for the land. Then he'd have to admit he owns it or is going to own it. Or we could... Or we could break down the door and pull swords. That works too. Henry Boxwood Sr. We would have worlds with you. Straight to business, eh? This ought to be good for a laugh. Gentlemen, if you would excuse us, the masked women have the floor. Oh, and have Kitty send in my valet. Thanks much. I suppose this was inevitable. You know why we're here? I know my future daughter-in-law ran with a rough crowd. It's the kind who like to dress up and punch strangers. I just thought she'd left it behind. And just when I thought I couldn't think less of her. I'm Mademoiselle Fraternité, and this is Madame Liberté. Are those names supposed to mean something to me? No, we're just being polite. You should try it sometime. I'm in the oil business. It's everyone else's job to be nice to me. You disrupted my meeting. You broke my door. What do you want? A little bird told me that you have designs on the Stony Shores vineyard. You shouldn't go listening to birds. Then it isn't true. Oh, no, it's true. But it's not just the vineyard. It's the whole compound and everything connected to it. Then you admit it. Of course I do. Not that it's going to do you any good. Who'd believe two masked strangers over a pillar of the community? I'd like to put you under a pillar of the community. Does your son know? That spineless number cruncher? Heck no. I couldn't trust him to even notice a pretty girl. I sent him into that restaurant a dozen times before he even noticed her. He is not a part of your scheme. I couldn't even count on him to get the coffee order right, much less something of this size. But he fell for her. Eventually. Not really a shock. She's a looker. I thought I'd have to do the deed myself, but I'm already married. 
At least I think I am. Hold on. Kitty, am I married right now? Number three? You sure? Oh, okay. Send her some flowers or something. Whatever she likes. Look it up. All right, where were we? I think we were just about to get to threats. Call it off. What? The wedding? No, this plan. The wheels, the paperwork, all of this scheme. Let them live and love as they want. Yeah, I'm not going to do any of that. Not when I'm this close to getting what I want. I don't think you understand your situation. It's you who doesn't get it, but that's just a scheduling error. Excuse me. Kitty. Is my valet here? Well, get him off the couch and get his lazy butt in here. This will just take a moment. About time. Ladies, meet my valet, bodyguard, and all-around problem solver, Quimby Quiver. What's up, righteous ladies? You causing a ruckus in my boss's office? Trey, not kosher. <laughs> this is your enforcer? He's not even wearing a shirt. I've allowed him flexibility in his wardrobe. What wardrobe? He's wearing shorts and sandals. Like what you see? Feelings mutual. Why don't we all get out of here and head to the sand? I know an amazing beach where the clothing is optional. I love to see more of you there. <laughs> really? Where is it? No, I must focus. We're here to keep the wedding of Emery Jr. and Liliana on track. Oh, I want it to happen too. And without any bylaws or loopholes that allow you to swoop in and land grab. And there we differ. Quimby, if you'd be so kind as to take care of these ladies... Oh, wait, let me get dressed for the occasion. Why are you putting on a gas mask? This meeting has definitely taken a turn. They do things differently out here. You came out to the coast. Let's get together, have a few laughs. What is happening? What is that smell? What is that thing you're holding? Why do I feel so... funky? So many questions from such a pretty girl. I'm just here to mellow you out. You like the scent? It's my special blend. Perfect for easing inhibitions. And this little beauty? I picked this up when I was checking out some waves down under, and I did some modifications. This is my didgeridoom. I can barely move my arms. That sword looks so heavy. Maybe you should just lay it down. No, I'm not going to. Oh, I just did. Oh, that's better. Sure it is. You know what looks heavy now? Your clothes. Maybe we should take those off too. Huh? Oh, it's not your turn yet, Red. What? I think, and I'm pretty high over here, but I think she wants to touch your thingy. Whoa, slow down, lady. No, silly. <laughs> You're... You are right. My shirt is really heavy. <sighs> oh, that's better. She wants to hold your digger, your diglet. Oh, you want to hold the didgeridoom. What do I get to hold if I let you? We've got some ideas. <laughs> Why is she being so quiet? Oh, haven't you figured it out? <laughs> figured out what? It's because she's holding her breath. She what? Uh. And this Whoa. is for me. This Brody. is for fraternity. This Bogus. is for everyone you've tried this on. What did I miss? And this is for cultural approbation. Ah. Uh, uh, heinous. Oh, man, that guy sucks, but I still feel so good. <laughs> Perhaps you should uh, put your shirt back on. Nope, I'm good. Now, as for you. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> Take that stupid thing off. I said, please, don't kill me. With what you just had him do, I could do it so easily, and it would feel so great. Even if you did kill me, the wheels are still turning. If it's not me, it'll be one of Junior's older brothers. It stays in the family. Family? Ugh, I cannot tell you how tired I am of hearing that word right now. Someone's at the door. Reinforcements, I expect. Kitty called the cops. You've lost in every way. Not every way. I can still make it so you've seen your last sunrise. Do it. My legacy is secured. Oh, look, 
a big button. I'm gonna press it. Zinnia! Saffron, what are you doing here? It wasn't my idea. Henry Boxwood Sr. Here comes the bride. I'd run and hide. <laughs> Is it true? He confirmed everything right before he tried to kill us, including the fact that your Henry knew nothing. Is that the last heir with you? The prodigal daughter returns. Saffron, I haven't seen you since you were a bratty little child, correcting the grammar of all the adults. Even then, what can I say? I was precocious. Now I can say it to your face. I'm going to take everything from you. Oh, no, you won't. And what are you going to do about it, standing there in your pretty white dress? You're the weakest one in the room. I have more strength than you can imagine, because I'm not alone. We are with you. Always. Your hair looks so pretty. Uh, thank you. And to you too, ladies, but that's not what I meant. Honey? Yes, dear? You missed your cue. <laughs> Terribly sorry. Just having a devil of a time working this new fountain pen. Oh, look, it's my namesake and my greatest folly. What do you expect him to do? He hasn't got the sense in his head to stand up to me. He's right. Of course I am. When Liliana and Saffron told me the story on the way over, I was embarrassed, horrified. But then I started thinking. Well, that never ends well. And I realized I have access to the same resources that you do. The same files, the same charts, the same people. It's not what you have, it's how you use it. I couldn't agree more, so we made a quick stop so I could grab a piece of paper. Yes, what was that all about? To be revealed. But first, Liliana, I need you to sign this. What is it? I don't have time to explain. I can hear his goons on the way. Do you trust me? What? After all this, can you still trust me? If so, sign this. I promise it will help. Can you find it in your heart to trust me? I do. Kitty, if you'd be so kind as to notarize this. Thank you. Et tu, Kitty? Ah, now that everyone is here, Father, I can deliver this to you in front of everyone. You'll see it's signed, dated, and notarized. What is this? It's a very ancient custom, but one that I think is going to be very big in the future. It's called a prenuptial agreement. Oh, man, that's brilliant. Someone kiss that guy. Never mind, I'll do it. Hold on, Goldie. I think there's someone in line ahead of you. Oh, you'll need to catch me up here. You see, since we both signed this agreement, it says that when we enter into marriage, that what's yours is yours and what's mine is mine. And should something happen, divorce or an untimely death, it stays that way. Or in the highly unlikely scenario that I suddenly gain a surprise inheritance. Then no matter what happens to me or to you, that belongs to you and neither I nor any member of my family can lay claim to it. But what are the odds of something like that happening? Astronomical. As unlikely as someone like you falling for someone like me. Henry, this is the bravest thing I've ever seen you do. You stood up to your father. I know, it's the second most terrifying thing I've ever done. <laughs> second? What was the first? Asking you to marry me. And look how both turned out. Maybe I should take more risks. <laughs> Maybe so. Now kiss me, husband. I'll fight this. I'll have it struck down. Why would you do that, father? It was your idea. Well, look, it was even your legal firm that drew it up. What? How? You little... That's it. The wedding is off. No, it is very much on. Unless you'd like to stand up in front of all these people and tell them why it is you don't want us to get married. Well, uh, I... Uh... Well, we're wedding. You have my blessing. Thank you two so much. I hope it wasn't too much trouble. No, all in a day's work. Yes, thank you so much for... Oh, um... Hey, uh, Liliana, why is Henry looking up at the ceiling? I expect it's because you're not wearing a shirt. Yeah, so shouldn't he be using the opportunity to take a peek? Like that guy, I see you guy. His manners have taught him to look away. It's not like I'm naked, I've still got a bra on. And it's very nice, so compact. I know, right? Mrs. Dumare designed it, so I can still be swinging swords and flipping around and not worry about anything flopping out. <laughs> yes, I'm sure. Very functional. Right. I hate to be that person, but I've been given an important job, and I mean to see it done. We've got a church full of people waiting on you, too. 
We've got to get her to the church on time. Precisely. Everyone, move out. May I just say, you look lovely in taffeta. Yeah, like a big piece of candy that I want to unwrap. Shoot, does that to be my line? Oh, I've got plenty left for you, you flame-headed vixen. Is she all right? The after effects of a powerful drug. We just need to clear her lungs. I expect driving at a rapid pace with the windows down will do the trick. Good, because we have a new problem. Or rather, we have the original problem. Fausto. Exactly. We helped the happy couple, but it still leaves them together, which he's going to have a big problem with. With which he's going to have a big problem. Really? That sounds so wrong to my ears. That's a guy who won't take true love as a real answer. Exactly. The story's not over yet. One last unpleasant conversation to have. At least one. What's that? Oh, and nothing. More of the side effect. Allons-y. Hey, can we find someone I can make out with on the ride over? I uh, suppose I could, you know, uh, for the team. Uh, Zinnia. I'm just trying to be helpful. Any sign of him? Nothing, and no signal from Saffron at the altar. I expect he's waiting for the most dramatic moment. That makes sense. How are you feeling? Good. Real good, actually. A bit tingly still. I remember the office and the shirtless guy, and then things get all fuzzy. Suddenly we were at the church. I told Dudley you were a bit woozy from the battle, and you'd see him after the service. He's sitting on the bride's side just over there. Oh, I see him. Thanks, Zinnia. Hey, quick question. Did I kiss you today? You did. Oh. Wow. You have nothing to apologize for, Goldie. It was quite nice. Great. That's good to hear. So we didn't... A kiss was just a kiss. Ah, gotcha. Just wanted to make sure the team was still good. You know, I... You know, I felt like your hair was longer earlier. No, I haven't changed it today. Uh, ah, you must be thinking of when you kissed Saffron. I kissed her too? I was a real kissing bandit. Is she... Are we okay? It's fun, but it surprised her as uh, she was driving at the time. Oh, sorry about that. When did she start smoking? Uh, she doesn't. <laughs> uh, you must be thinking of the police officer you kissed. The what? You kissed Saffron, which caused her to swerve, which caught the attention of the officer who pulled us over, at which point you kissed him too. But that was it? Yes. That was it. He let us off with a warning, so you must have some power in those lips. Never had any complaints. I suppose you won't miss this part. What do you mean? Going up against an unknown villain. Tied up or drugged or mind-controlled. Oh, I remember that lady. Now you can step away from these dangers and choose a quiet life with your love. No more steakhouts on the cold rooftops. No more mystery meat in foreign parts. No more tea by moonlight. No more rides on top of the train. But no more loneliness. No more fear of what danger lurks around the corner. No more Saffron and Zinnia kicking me out of the room when they want to make out. Goldie, I can't say we won't miss you. Our world has been better with you in our orbit. But it would be selfish to keep you for ourselves. You have a man who loves you, and uh, I believe you love him too. I do, the big galoot. If you want to be with him, my wife and I would never say for you to turn from love. We certainly haven't, and so should not expect such a thing from you. It has been amazing. Zinnia, you and Saffron have changed. Shh, 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 sweet Marigold. Now is not the time for goodbyes. I merely wanted to tell you that we support whatever choice you make. I know. Thank you. Plus, if I was going to choose a moment for disrupting a service with maximum dramatic effect, it is swiftly approaching. Stand ready. One last time. Oui. One last time. Should anyone present know of any reason that this couple should not be joined in holy matrimony? Speak now, or forever hold your peace. I fully expected him to choose this moment. Me too. 
What's going on? Nothing, which is odd. Maybe he came to his senses. I'm sure that's it. Then by the power vested in me... I, Fausto Phoenix, have something to say about this so-called marriage. Of course you do. Sorry, you two. I need to step away. Good luck, Safran. <laughs> this is going to make a memorable wedding story. Henry, I have something I wanted to ask you. If the answer to the question is I do, we've already done that part. No, it's something else. But first, do you trust me? This wedding is a farce! The bride is under false pretenses. And if no one else will tell her the truth, then I shall. Fausto Phoenix, sir. Ah, the clumsy one. Libertad, yes? Close enough. You were right. A phrase I never tired of hearing. But right about what? The plot, the inheritance, it was Henry's father behind the whole thing. Sigmundat, you are here too? But there's one part you are wrong about. Who is this now? Signorita Familia? Mademoiselle Fraternité, actually. Close enough. And a rare beauty indeed. You may approach Dama Hemarosa. She's spoken for. Hang on, let's hear him out. Fraternité. Oh, right, I'm focused. They set the plane in motion, but they didn't account for one thing. Love. It happened. It's real. She really fell for him. And he for her. Their love is genuine. She can tell you herself. The plot has been dealt with. The perpetrators exposed. You've won. This is no victory. The woman I love is going to marry another. I know her heart as I do my own. She feels for me what I feel for her. I know it. Life doesn't always go the way you expect it should. Sometimes the path diverges and you must make a choice. It is unfortunate, but sometimes it must come down to two options. One or the other. And sometimes there's another way. Lily, what are you doing up here? I heard all about these flying buttresses and needed to see them up close. Fausto, what are you doing? I've come to rescue you. From what? A family that is taking care of me? A man that loves me? Peace? Stability? You told me I needed to make a choice. To fight for what I wanted. What I want is you. Is it because it's the one thing you can't have? You think so little of me? That I'm a child who wants his favorite toy back? I must have her and no one else can. That's kind of how you sound, yeah. Bah! What do you know about true passion? This isn't about passion. You have that in abundance. If I were to choose you, would you stay at home with me at night? Quietly reading books until we fell asleep. How can I resist the call of the city when the people need me? But that's what I need. You expect me to put you before the cause of justice? I'd appreciate it if you put me before the lonely widow you saved, or the handsome farmer whose farm you saved. You said you understood what I needed. I did. I do. But I needed you to do the same. I love our adventures, exposing an evil sheriff, giving the money back to the people, and making love on the rooftop in the moonlight. I should remind you, we're in a church. Shh, let her talk. But Henry is here to help me balance my books, to listen to me complain about the staff over morning coffee, to walk with me along the beach. Can, can you do all that? I can learn. Fausto. That's not who I am. Of course it isn't. And I wouldn't want you to pretend it was. But you love me, and I love you. Yes, those are true. Can you accept that I also love Henry? That he's also what I need? That I can be more than just your sidekick and his wife? I don't understand what you are saying. This doesn't sound like a breakup. Perhaps it doesn't have to be. This choice of this or that, the one or the other, it's, it's made my heart seasick with the back and the forth. It was only when I spent time with Safran that I understood. Understood what? That I need to do what is right for me. I'm not just the quiet chef with a steadfast husband, nor am I the salamander, passionate partner to the great Fausto Phoenix. Salamander, good name. I am both. I need both. I need both of you. Both? What do you mean? I want to be with you, Fausto. And I want to be with Henry, too. At the same time. Is such a thing possible? It could be. And your husband? 
I've already talked to him about it. Ask him yourself. Henry, you would share her with me. I'm so lucky to have Liliana in my life. I'm appreciative of anything she gives me. I have a piece of her heart, and she has one of mine. Why should I have any say over what she does? And will you not get jealous? Look at you. I can't do any of the things that you can. But that street goes both ways. Are you jealous of me? <laughs> me? Jealous of you, little man? Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's fine. That's exactly my point. We don't have to be rivals. We don't have to be anything to each other, j except understanding. But the lonely widow, the grateful farmer, I, I don't know if I can. I'm not asking you to. I know who you are. I'm asking you to see me as I am. Do you accept this arrangement? Where does it might be? I do. And what about you, my adorable groom? Of course. Then by the power vested in me as the captain of my own heart, I take you both to have and to hold for as long as this works for all of us. Amen. Now, getting up here in this dress was tough. Climbing down is going to be nearly impossible. Boys, can you help me out here? Of course, I have you. Henry, are you ready? I'm here. Handle her with care. Always. Stefan, I have a feeling they would have figured this out without us, but I'm glad to have played a small part. I'm sorry. Sorry for what? I haven't been honest with you, and I want you to know uh, I release you. You release me? I've been thinking about us and our time together and uh, that perhaps we went about things wrongly. Wrongly isn't a word. Please, this is not the time. You're leaving me? No, I'm freeing you from the bondage of our life with me. I'm very confused. What am I a prisoner of exactly? I stole you from this life, from a family that misses you and wishes you were with them. Like Fausto. I was the selfish one, taking you for myself, never caring about those who might have been hurt by your absence. Is that why you've been acting so strange since we arrived? I spoke with some of your family. Who? Liliana? No, it was your aunts, I forgot their names. Imogene and Esme? Those old battle axes? Saffron. I hated them when I was a kid, and even more so now. I don't understand. You appeared so happy. Everyone wanted to be near you. Oh, yes. That's how it seemed. Zinnia, I'm miserable. You are? But you're smiling, laughing, running off to the next family event. Dearest, I'm lying. With every forced smile, every insult that I let slide, every dig at my choices that I casually ignore, another piece of me dies. I hate it here. No more than that. I hate who I am when I'm here. What didn't you tell me? Why didn't you tell me? All this time, we've both been suffering, but all on our own. It hasn't been all bad. Liliana is growing up well and now has two lovers surrounding her to keep her wrapped in happiness. It's the rest of them who can go straight to hell. Saffron. I mean it. I'll even book their trip. Zinnia, when I was born, it was like my parents built a mold of how I was supposed to be. It was my job to grow into that shape. But I broke that shell. No, you cracked it wide enough so I could finally break free and understand that I was never going to be that person. But your family... These people? <laughs> piece by piece, brick by brick, they're trying to restore that prison. To fit me back into what they wanted, their expectations. My family... <laughs> Zinnia, you are my family. Saffron. You and Goldie. Ursula and Viviana. Vitus and Tex. Cynthia and La Contessa. These are the people who see me as I am. Not as what I didn't grow up to be. As a real person. Not as a failure. I see you, Saffron. I'm sorry I couldn't see this. I love you. I love you too. My family almost ruined my marriage, but I'm not going to let them ruin California for us. Next time we come out, just the three of us, we can... Oh, yes, that's right. Indeed, the next emotional hill to climb. I spoke with Goldie, told her we'd support her either way. Do we? 
I mean, Dudley is fine, but... We must not show any favoritism. We've seen how either or can be dangerous. If we make her choose us over him, she'll always wonder. And might come to blame us for forcing the issue. Mm, she must make her choice, and we must live with it. I don't want to lose her. No, right. But I will not be the one who cools her fire. Oh, no. What is it? Something we hadn't considered. If we come back without Goldie, Mrs. Dumer might just kill us both. <laughs> Revenons à nos moutons. Let's uh, focus on getting back home. Well, there they go. At least Fausto didn't invite himself along for the honeymoon. <laughs> we'll have some strange new waters to navigate, but I hope this is what makes her happy. Makes all of them happy. I hate saying goodbye. You don't have to, you know. He just asked you. You haven't set a date. There's a whole engagement period. Planning. Dearest, we are closer to his home. Delaying the decision will just cause more confusion. Unfortunately, this is where the path splits. And Liliana's choice isn't going to work for us. It's too many angles. I know, I did the math. You know I love you both. Of course we do. Just got my luggage all stowed. Next up is yours. Are you ready? I guess I am. No one said when. <laughs> Very good. Cheers. What are we drinking to? An uncertain future, but one that I face with my lady love at my side. That I will definitely drink to. À ta santé. Prost. This is a wedding. Shouldn't you be celebrating? And shouldn't you be motoring your way to Oklahoma? No. That's... Not going to happen. The trip? The wedding. The engagement. The relationship. It's done. Done? Oh, Goldie. We talked and we... We talked. And the more we talked, the more we realized we had different happy endings in mind. Which meant we weren't the right partners for those trips. I'm so sorry. Yeah, well, better to know now than after the I do's, right? What can I say? Seeing what you two have has spoiled me. I won't settle for anything less than the best. Barman, this woman needs a large drink. Something fruity. Would you mind if we took the drinks back up to your room? Oh, why? Uh, what did you have in mind? Goldie, you're not still feeling the effects of the gas, are you? <laughs> no, I just... I'd rather not turn into a crying mess in front of your extended family. Ah, uh, oui. Of course. Thanks. Of course, this means I'm single and ready to mingle. What do you think Fausto is doing later? Town girl. That's a Mustang. You need to work your way up to that. Let's find you a pony first. What made you decide? Zinnia, you don't have to answer that, Goldie. What did I say? She doesn't have to say why she chose us instead of him. It wasn't a contest. It wasn't. But it was more that... We have these phases in our life. Sometimes they're over before you know it. And I could see this one ending, and I wasn't ready for that. I want to stay with the Swashbuckling Ladies Debate Society, with you two, for as long as I can. The Swashbuckling Ladies Retirement Community doesn't have the same ring to it, but we can work on that. We'll have you for as long as you'll have us. Barman, I think we're going to need the whole bottle. Come with us, dear Goldie. We have drinks to drink, songs to sing, tears to shed, and stories to share. Like the one about your wedding? I uh, think she's ready for that. If this trip has shown us anything, it's that our Goldie is ready for everything. Before we tell you that story, we need to tell you another one. About the all-rounder, the barmy barrister, and the impossible edict. Oh, this is going to be good. 
That Golden Valley Part 2 was written, directed, and edited by Kyle Olson. Our producer and sound designer is that matrimonial minx Ryan Fitzpatrick. Our talent wrangler is that open-minded ingenue Brooke Unverfirth. Starring Amy Shaw as Zinnia, Anastasia Plum as Saffron, Kara Gallo as Goldie, Devin Mahan as Henry Jr., Tony Blosser as Fausto, Tommy Metz as Henry Sr., Pete Wright as The Priest, and Justin Kent as both Dudley and Quimby. Our theme song is written and performed by Headley Knights, and our interstitial music is Intended Force by Kevin McCloyd. Make sure to follow us on Instagram at Ox and Hair so you won't miss the next thrilling adventure. The Swashbuckling Ladies Debate Society is an Ox and Hair media production. Old format, new ideas. Thank you.